What up, wrestling world? It's your boy Heel Steven. I am back with a new video. I'm here to do a TNA Impact Wrestling review for June 3rd, 2015. I know it's been a while since I've actually done an Impact review on my channel. And a lot of people always ask me, yo, Heel Steven, how come you don't cover Impact no more on your channel? I mean, I do talk about some Impact news. The thing about the reviews, though, if you think about it, I normally review shows on the Team Hill podcast. So, I always try to save my reviews for the podcast. However, being that I got to watch Impact this week fully and on time, if you will, I decided to, you know what, fuck it, let me do a quick review on it. Overall, I thought this episode of Impact was a very solid episode. Okay, it was easy to sit through. There's some things that I scratched my head to, but at the end of the day, I thought it was very good easy to sit through solid show the show kicked off with ec3 and tyrus there making their way to the ring and apparently in the ring there is a quintent pretty much a group of guys that are like a choir type of thing and they're singing ec 3s theme song in a consistent bass and it was kind of annoying but funny at the same time and they're pretty much singing this theme song out comes ec3 to the ring with two models and he's pretty much saying that, you know what, it's, it's time for him to be the champion, the world champion. And tonight, they're here to celebrate the the end of Kurt Angle's reign as TNA world champion. He says that he's next in line since he is number one in the top five. And Angle says, you know what, you are deserving of a shot, but right now is not your time. He should be worried about Rockstar Spud since Rockstar Spud is indeed the X Division champion. And he can cash in his X Division Championship for option C to get a shot at the world title. And EC3 pretty much says, you know what? I have an offer for, for Rockstar Spud that he cannot refuse. EC3 leaving the ring and Angle as the Quintens are leaving. He Angle slams one of them, which I thought was very funny. Then you have the first match of the night. You had Lashley versus Eric Young in a one-on-one -on -one match. Overall, I thought this was an okay match. I mean, let's be honest here. You've seen one Lashley versus Eric Young match. You've pretty much seen them all. Lashley's the guy that took Eric Young's title a while back. At the time, yeah, Lashley was the heel. Eric Young was the face. Now it's reversed. Apparently, Eric Young is this monster heel that everyone claims that he is. I mean, again, listen, I, I don't hate Eric Young. I think Eric Young's a good wrestler. I don't buy his heel turn. I'm just not convinced. But again, this match was a very good solid match but then again like i said you've watched one match you've seen them all and it seemed that eric Young was going to get the win out comes chris melendez he's standing on the entrance area just standing there like nothing like they didn't even show him like come out to the entrance area he was just standing there boom like tito ortiz back in you know august 1st tito out of nowhere lashley spears eric young for the one two three so that was that i'll be honest though I don't want to see Eric Young versus Chris Melendez because I get the vibe. That's where they're going to go. Can you think about it, okay? Like I said, Eric Young, to TNA standards, is a main eventer. And for him to go face Sarge Melendez, it's a downgrade. And I get it. Oh, he might put him over all you want. But to me, it shouldn't go that route. If, oh, here's here my take on that, okay? Chris Melendez, to me, people might say I'm fucked up for this shit, but to me, he's just green in the ring. There, I said it. We had Jade versus Brooke. Overall, this was an okay match. It didn't go that long either, but in this thing, it seemed that Brooke was going to get attacked by the dollhouse, and Jay went to attack her, and she missed. She hit Marty Bell, which pretty much gave Brooke the win, so that was that. Then you had the Beatdown Clan versus The Rising. Here's my take with this, okay? Overall, it was an okay match, okay? I like the spot where Drew Galloway, he was in a tree of woe, and out of nowhere, he hit, I think it was low-key, with the belly to belly as he was put in a tree of woe. But at the end of it, you know, The Rising got the win. Here's my take with this, okay, overall. We've seen this so many times, that is no longer special. Like, when you think about it, yeah, you know, TNA's big thing is always faction versus faction. However, what I would have done here is, okay, at least have one-on-one, -on -one, I don't know, uh, Eli Drake versus Kenny King, or Low Key versus Galloway, or MVP versus Mika, something of that mix. Because when you have these kind of matches, like, these kind of matches to me are for your pay-per-views, or in this case, in TNA's case, a free purview. I would not be surprised at Slammiversary. You end up seeing the Beatdown Clan versus The Rising. And again, you're taking away 
the big moment, the big build, if you will. These kind of matches should be on a big deal show. And to me, when you have them going at it so many times, which they've already did, it takes away that uh, special moment, a special feel, if you get what I'm saying. Overall, again, it was a very solid match, and the Rising got the win. Then you had Rockstar Spud in the ring. He's announcing, what's he going to do? Is he going to cash in? Option C, get a shot at Kurt Angle. And Angle comes out. He says, you know what? If you're going to fight, we're going to do this. I'm not going to lose to you. EC3 comes out. And he says, you know what? Here's what I offer you. We'll offer you a spot again in Team Dixie as the chief of staff. Spud says, you know what? I've always looked out for you for a long time. And you treated me like shit pretty much. And with that being said, he's going to cash in option C. So next week, it will be Kurt Angle versus Rockstar Spud for the TNA World Title at Destination X, which caused EC3 to attack Spud, and then Angle got involved as well, and then they announced in the main event, a tag team match, EC3 and Tyrus versus Kurt Angle and Rockstar Spud. Then you had Mickey James, she showed in a studio with James Storm. Apparently, she was waiting to get this record label, a, a signing, if you will, and apparently Storm was there with her, and he pretty much told her how he felt. He says that he wants to be with Mickey James. He wants to be there for Mickey James and her kid. How he feels that, you know, Magnus is not the provider that he needs to be. He is nowhere in James Storm's league and he wants to be there. He wants Mickey James and her son to join James Storm in the revolution. And Mickey James felt some type of way about this, which I could understand. And she's like, no, you know, I'm leaving. And they end up, you know, apologizing and they hug it out. And then they're showing that they're leaving to the train station or whatever. A phone rings and James Storm pushes Mickey James into a train tracks. And he pretty much grabs Mickey's phone, calls Magnus, says, you know what? Your wife is not coming over dinner tonight. I like this. I like the storyline. I feel like this is something different. It's kind of cutting edge. We think about it. Destination America is so American like where it's all about, I don't know, General Motors, hamburgers and country music in America. And this is something completely out of the blue, if you will. And I like it. I dig this. I think these are one of the few that should be the main focal point in TNA. I wouldn't say give this feud the world title, but make this one of the big Focal points TNA. Match number three in the best of five series. You had the Dirty Heels, Austin Aries, Bobby Roode versus the Wolves. And this match overall was a very good match. Back and forth action from both teams. And before the match though, you know, Austin Aries like, you know what, Bobby Roode? We got to be our old selves again. What made us, you know, big in the tag team division in TNA. And Roode's like, you know, but we can't do that anymore. I'm no longer that person anymore. And in the match, there was a moment where Aries grabbed the belt and distracted the referee. Bobby Roode low below Eddie Edwards and hit him with the chair. So again, you know, in a way, being that they were down two matches to zero, they're now back in the fight. Now it's two to one. I get the feeling, though, the final match will be at Slammiversary. And if that's so, this is the kind of match that should be put in a full metal mayhem or a ladder match, if you ask me. But I like it though. I'm happy that Bobby Roode is once again a heel, which I personally feel Bobby Roode is a good baby face, but he's a better heel. You had Madison Rain. She's out there in the ring, pretty much saying that you know what? She's been back there. Nothing's been coming her way. All the focus point had been on the dollhouse, Gail Kim, Angelina Love, and Velvet Sky. She called out Velvet Sky. Velvet Sky comes out through the crowd and apparently much is a brawl between both women apparently she hits madison rain with the stunner and the crowd goes i guess apeshit for it and then angelina love comes out with her security and says you know what you're not supposed to be here she gets her arrested and while this is happening she hits velvet sky they're escorting velvet sky out of the impact zone and then another pair of security comes in and they arrest Angelina Love for attacking a fan, that being pretty much Velvet Sky. I know where they're going with this. It's pretty much a la 2014 Brie Bella Stephanie McMahon when Brie got escorted out or Stephanie got arrested. I know where they were going with it. Kind of cheesy if you ask me. I'll be honest, I'm not really big into this feud. Even if you add in the reunion of the beautiful people, all three women, and have them going as singles, I'm just not big on this. It's not really my cup of tea. I assume here, if this is the situation, 
They're going to have Angelina be the ring general. But even if that, I'm just not big on this. I had the main event, EC3 Tyrus versus Rockstar Spud and Kurt Angle. This overall was a very good, solid tag team main event. A lot of back and forth action. The crowd was into this. At the end, you know, Rockstar Spud pinned Tyrus. After Angle hit Tyrus with the Angle Slam. And then they're all celebrating in the ring. You see EC3 just laying there by the entrance area. And then Austin Aerie comes out with the briefcase and says, you know what? At Destination X, Rockstar Spud will cash in option C, something that he created. And he says that, you know what? Whoever wins this match, at the end of it, I'll be in the main event because I'm facing the winner. He's going to cash in his briefcase that he won, the Feast or Fired, for a shot at the world title. So that's pretty much, you know, that. And that's how the end of the show with EC3 just complaining, screaming. Again, I thought this was a very solid show. There are things that I did like, things that I critiqued that I felt like this should have been better. But overall, a solid impact. Go watch it for yourself. See what I mean? That's all I'm going to say here. Drop your comments down below with your thoughts on this week's episode of Impact Wrestling. I'm going to try to do some more reviews of Impact as weeks progress. And I'll also talk about it on the Team Heal Podcast, which, by the way, we go live this Friday at 11.30 p.m. on the Team Heal Podcast YouTube channel. Down below is the link to the channel. Go check it out. Subscribe to it. You can follow me on Twitter at HealSteven. Make sure you like all my videos. And as always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Until next video, I'm Heal Steven, and I'll see you all next time.